God bless you, family. God, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Friday edition of the Morning Devo. And Fridays, we usually talk about the faith of God always, but we usually talk about health and wealth. And today we're continuing talking about wellness, our mindset of wellness, our spiritual wellness, our our physical wellness, our emotional wellness, amen, and everything that goes well in our spirit, amen, will go well with our soul, and everything that goes well with our soul will go well with our body, and everything that goes well with our body, amen, will be a physical manifestation of what the spiritual God that we serve is doing in our lives. So wholeness is the name of this wellness devo this morning. So God bless you. My name is Sam Lopez, aka DJ Sam Rock. I welcome you back to another edition of the Morning Devotional, and Fridays we usually talk about, like I said, health or wealth, or health and wealth. It all goes together. Amen. Because what would it be if you're healthy and you're always struggling for financial breakthrough? And how would it be if you have financial breakthrough and you're unhealthy? God wants us to be whole. Amen. And wholeness, I looked it up because wholeness is one of those words that is interesting. Amen. And I looked it up and wholeness means the state of being unbroken or undamaged. We, yes, we live in a broken world. Yes, we are damaged people. Yes, um, but God wants us to be unbroken and undamaged. That's the wholeness that God is offering us. The wholeness of the building is ex- exceedingly well preserved. So the foundation of God's building, the foundation of God's kingdom, the foundation that we stand on the rock of Christ is unbroken and undamaged. So therefore, he wants us to be unbroken and undamaged. A lot of people don't want to believe that. A lot of people don't think that's possible. But with God, all things are possible. So he wants us to be whole. A lot of times when people ask uh, for prayer for if someone is ill or sick or dying, I, I usually pray for the wholeness of that person. So that way they will be unbroken and undamaged during whatever they go through. I pray that over myself a lot, over my family, over my marriage, over my children, amen, over my mother, my mother-in-law, my brothers and my sister. I pray that over their families as well, that we will be made whole. It's possible because God says it in his word that it's possible, amen. We're going to be in um, uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 in that area, amen. Um, we're going to take it from that point of view of what Apostle Paul was trying to express. Amen. So, man, I'm excited because who doesn't want wholeness in their life? I want wholeness. I want a piece of the pie. I want a piece of what God has for me. As a matter of fact, I want everything that God has for me on this side of eternity. So that way he will be glorified in my life and he will be glorified in your life. Because every time God does a great thing, or does anything in my life, amen, it's worth talking about because it's supernatural. It's not natural. It's not ordinary. It's extraordinary. It's not natural. It's supernatural. It's not something that just happens. It's something that's amazing, amen, and God is amazing. He's faithful in all his ways, and um, I'm just excited about what he's going to do this morning. So one of the questions I have is, have you ever gone on a much-needed break If you have a holiday off or maybe you had a vacation and it's all good, right? And then you come back and it seems like you're still tired. Like like if you never had a vacation, that might be because you're overwhelmed in the area of when you come home or when you come back um, to your reality. Amen. And you have undealt issues. And since you had undealt issues, although you took time off of those issues, they were never resolved. So then you come back still damaged and broken. We live in a broken world. We live in a fallen world. We live with a bunch of damaged people. I might be damaged. You might be damaged. But God wants to put us whole, make us whole. He wants us to go on a vacation and come back complete, completely whole. Right? He doesn't want us to go on vacation and come back the same way we left. The same way when we enter into the presence of God. When we enter into the presence of God, we might come with brokenness. We might come with shame and guilt. We might come with all kind of baggage. But when we leave his presence, we should be made whole. I know it's a big stretch uh, for a Friday. Amen. But um, that's what I'm getting. That's that's how I see the scripture that we're going to read. Amen. Uh, and that's how I see it in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Apostle Paul. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, now's the time to leave it on the live chat. If you're listening from the podcast, God bless you. Welcome back. Thanks for listening. And there should be a way 
to connect with me from whatever platform you're listening from. Um, if all else fails, you can always go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. And when you go to this website right here, you just sign up. Sign up. And it's a one and done deal. It takes less than 40 seconds. And you'll be connected with my email list and with some ministry tools, some freebies that I send your way. And a nice welcome. Because I like to welcome every new person um, to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. And if you want to share this out and you know somebody right now that does not have social media... Usually people have YouTube, right? I know that's social media, but it's off the grid. And YouTube is a pretty solid platform. So you can send them to my YouTube channel as well at DJ Sam Rock. Very simple. I try to make everything simple. Amen. Also, if you want to listen to the Radio 247, um, the Sailor Radio Network is so winners with a Z dot O-R-G. So everything's in the name. Everything's in the website. Everything's there. Amen. Everything that I can offer you by way of the spirit is there. Amen. And if you want to do a one on one, there's a way to connect with me from the website as well. So listen, we're going to be in Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23. We're going to talk about what the Apostle Paul was inspired to write in um, the letter to the church. So hopefully and prayerfully, um, we will get something incredible out from this and we will run with it. We would apply it to our lives and we may hold. Why not? Amen. Um, if you try so many other things, maybe you're, you're on medication for anxiety. Maybe you um, have trouble sleeping. Maybe you have trouble, you know, um, all kind of stuff could be going on. But let's go to God and his word and talk about what he is talking about and speak what he spoke over our own lives and see what happens. It just might be what you always needed. It just might be what you always were looking for. It just might be the truth that you were looking for. It just might be uh, the breakthrough that you were looking for if you go to God's word and apply his word. Amen. It's okay to ask God the questions that you want to ask him. It's okay to doubt a little bit, but it's not okay to doubt all the time because if you doubt all the time, that means you don't believe all the time. Listen, sometimes when I have doubts, I still believe in God's word. It's that I don't understand sometimes how he does a thing doesn't mean that I don't believe in him if I don't understand. And God knows what I don't understand, and he knows what you don't understand, and he loves us anyway, and he still performs signs, miracles, and wonders in our lives and through our lives for believing. Amen? Believing is a big part of being a born-again believer. Amen? If you're a believer, you're a belonger, you belong into the kingdom, you belong in the kingdom of God. Amen? And being in Christ, to me, is a location, so we're found in Christ, so we can identify in him. We can identify with him, and we are you know, servants of the Most High Lord and God and Savior. So I'm going to take a minute to pray. Then I'm going to take another minute to share this out with as many people that come to my heart and mind. And then when we come back, we're going to go into uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and see what the Apostle Paul was inspired to write by Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Lord God, for today, another day, a new day. Thank you that all things are being made new. Our story is still being written, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the power of prayer, the power of your word, the power of grace and mercy upon my life and upon every single person's life that's listening and watching. Father God, I thank you today that you're going to teach us and be with us and guide us and guard us and to deliver us from all unholy spirits. And that, Lord God, I thank you today for the testimonies that will come forth from these morning devos, from this wellness devo in particular, in Jesus' holy name. So I pray a hedge of protection over every single mind right now in the name of Jesus, that, Lord God, that you will help us to see and that you will help us to listen and that you will help us to speak your word uh, throughout the day over our lives and to other people, Lord God, that we will be a useful tool from your kingdom toolbox and that we will move forward in victory, knowing that you are in us, working through us, and, and you are with us in the holy name of Jesus. I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So I don't know. There's something going on with my screen here. I don't know yet. It's on the live. So I'm going to try to, let's see, switch this up. No, nope, it's there. Uh, so when I come back, hopefully it'll be gone. If not, amen, we'll handle it. We'll deal with it, even if I have to just go all audio. So let me give you a minute to share this out. When we come back, we'll be in... Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. I'll be right back. God bless.
man, we're back, we're back, we're back. And yeah, there's a malfunction in my in my camera, so I apologize for that. Um, let me try something else. Give me one second, and very interesting stuff that happens when you're live. Um, so what could that mean? Um, it could mean that either two things, um, that my video card on my computer is starting to fail, or uh, my camera is starting to fail. So either way, amen. Um, we just have to handle what we have to handle. The most important thing is that we get into this word. Amen. Um, so let me take it off the grid and then you'll be just hearing my audio voice. Amen. So I apologize for that, but let's go forward. Let's move forward. No distraction. Let's go for it. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be in whoop, go back here. And Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, Apostle Paul says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole and undamaged. Pure and whole and undamaged. There he goes. He said it. And what God says, he means what he means, he says. Amen. Amen. So there should be no shame in you asking for God to make you pure and whole and undamaged. Consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose. In other words, he wants us holy because once we're holy like he's holy, we are made whole. And may your spirit and soul and body, you see that? Everything is covered with the word of God, by the word of God. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a process. And in the process, God is already saying what's going to happen when we put our trust and hope in him. God is already letting us know that we're, we're made right and we're made good. We're made well in his presence. God is letting us know that all of this is possible because of what he has done and what he continues to do in our lives. God is showing up and he's showing up in big ways. Amen. He's showing up in ways that are incredible. He's showing up in ways that are just um, mind-blowing, but he shows up. Amen? It's not a time that I can remember that God has not shown up in the situations of my life where I, where I needed him the most. Amen? And I don't know about you, but I kind of like need God every day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't need the Lord. I know a lot of people uh, might think they don't need God or might think they have everything under control, um, but I realized a long time ago that I don't have everything in my control. If I did have everything in my control, amen, then that would mean that I wouldn't need God because then I would be the perfect one. I would be the all-sufficient one. I would be the all-powerful one. I would be the all-knowing one, but I am not, and you're not either, amen? So I hope you understand that, and I hope you agree with that, and if you don't agree with that, then if you're calling yourself God, and then you, you are to be worshipped, and I'm not going to worship another man or another woman. So you might be on your own on that. Amen. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the morning, Devo. It's good to see you. So the Apostle Paul pretty much made it clear. The God of peace himself is the God who is making us whole. The God of peace himself is the God who is separating, separating us for his purpose. The God of peace himself is the very God um, that's taken us out of those things that we used to be in. This God of peace himself is sanctifying us. He's making us whole and holy, amen, for his purposes and his plan. I might not know all the plans and purposes that God has for my life or for your life, but I do know that he has a perfect plan, amen? And in that plan, although it might be a lot of mysteries about the plan, because I don't know the whole thing from the beginning to the end, but I trust in the one who knows the whole plan from beginning to the end. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? So let's go back. So it's called, it's pretty much spiritual wellness, spiritual well-being. That's what basically Apostle Paul is saying, that God has us covered physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And our body, soul, spirit, everything is covered by God. Amen? So it's important. The importance of our spiritual relationship with God is tremendously emphasized in what we just read in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. The Apostle Paul talks about God's plan for us. Amen. God's plan for you and God's plan for me. Already has been established. Now, I know 
or fact that we could get in the way of God's plan. Since God is not forcing his way in my life and he's not forcing his way in your life, pretty much our will, right, could interrupt the, the will of God over our lives. If you don't believe me, just look at what's happening in the world right now. Look at what's happening to our brothers and sisters that claim to be believers and now they're denying Christ. They're denying God because of their situation. Or they might have found themselves in a situation where they feel that they don't need God because they have a lot of money, a lot of fame, a lot of this and a lot of that. Temporary things. And we could be deceived by the temporary and forget about the eternal. I'm going to say that again. We could be deceived by the temporary and forget about the eternal. God is an eternal God. And God gives us eternal promises. And his word is eternal. So for my well-being and for your well-being, don't you think that we rather trust in the eternal God, the one who knows everything from now all the way to infinity, than trusting the world system and what the world has to temporarily offer us? Don't you think it's time for us to step up to the plate and say, yes, I'm a believer. I believe in an eternal word, not a temporary word. Amen. And there are eternal consequences for a temporary decision to deny Jesus. That's another, that's another word. That's another morning Devo all by itself. So apostle Paul talks about God's plan for us to be whole and holy set apart for the use of God, sanctified, right? Delivered from amen and made part of. His plan in every area of our lives, not just going to church, not just in our prayer life, but in our thought life. When we go to the store, when we go to work, when we go to school, when we when we're at home, God is making us whole and holy everywhere we go. As a matter of fact, you want peace, you walk with peace, so you are the peace that you're looking for. You want uh, to make wise decisions, you have the wisdom of God. Amen. So you're the wisdom that you're looking for. So we have what God offers. We have what God says we have no less than that. And that's all that we need. And that's more than enough than what we need to live this life out. So in every area of life, God sets out the following order over spirit, over our soul and our body. So if you notice how he mentions our spirit first, because I believe in the order that God puts things. Amen. For instance, and I, I know I said this before, but I want to I want you to think about this. For instance, Jesus said to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That was the order that Jesus said. But do you know if you believe in first mentions that in the old covenant, the old testament, when God lines up um what he's doing in the Trinity, he talks about Elohim God, then Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, and then the Son. In that order. Amen. Then Jesus shows up. Since he's God, he could flip the script, right? And since he's God, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if you got that. I don't know if you caught that. It's something you have to catch in the spirit. Amen? But I believe in first mentions, and I believe when God places an order that we read things, that he left us to read things, I believe it's there for a purpose and a reason. It's not just to, oh, you know, let me just change the order up. The world is trying to change the order up of the family. The order is saying, uh, the world is saying that the uh, the order of man and order of woman are, you know, interchangeable. That a woman could be a man, a man could be a woman, and all that. I'm not going to go down that road. But I'm just giving you an example of how the world is trying to change the order that God set. And it seems like it works in some areas, but I can guarantee you, according to the scripture, it's not going to change. God's word never changes. His order will never change. Amen. He changes us, but he does not change. His word is eternal. Notice how he mentions our spirit first, then our soul. And what's in the soul, ladies and gentlemen? You want to have supernatural spiritual well-being? We have to seek what's in the soul. We have to be soul winners, amen, and make sure our soul is won by the Spirit of God through Jesus. Our soul is our mind. Our soul is our will and emotions. So therefore, the soul is very, very important. If you have a, a, a broken, damaged, sick soul, then you're going to have a broken, damaged, sick life, pretty much. But God wants, Jesus didn't come to save our spirit. He came to save our soul. Amen. He didn't come on a mission to make good people, better people. He came to give dead people life. Amen. And he tra- He transferred or transformed our souls. 
Jesus Christ is the ultimate soul winner. He came on a mission and accomplished his mission. Um, the rest is up to us. Whether you receive that truth or not, it's on you. For 30 years of my life, I was rejecting the gospel. I was rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of his grace and mercy, nothing else had nothing to do with me. He found it pleasing to save me and to save my soul and to rescue me way back in 2001. And for the first two years, I was trying to get out. I was trying to find a loophole in what happened to my life. Because I, I noticed that I lost a lot of friends, lost a lot of credibility. People thought I was crazy. Um, sometimes I didn't understand what I was doing. But so I, I tried to go into scriptures and find some way that I could live a double life. So I could live one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. And guess what? I never found those scriptures. I never found a way to do that. And thank God I didn't. And then I would try to challenge God with some big things that I said, well, God can't handle this. And every time I would pray about a thing, he would show up. Supernatural, right? Because he kept me in my place, in my position of freedom. He didn't want me to go back into bondage and slavery of sin. And he doesn't want you to go back to the bondage and slavery of sin. He wants you to be made whole. So we're talking about wholeness today on the wellness devo. So it's clear that our spiritual well-being is critical. It's central. It's important to every other area of our lives. So if you don't have one piece of the body, soul, and spirit, if one piece is a little off, the whole entire life will be off. Isn't that crazy? That's why God wants us to be unbroken and undamaged. We live in a broken world. And I came to God broken, amen? And he started putting the pieces back together in my life. And when he put the pieces back together in my life, and when he puts the pieces back together in your life, all the pieces are new. They're not old pieces. They're transformed pieces, right? He's trying to strip us from the old way of thinking and give us a new way of thinking. It's the newness of Christ, not the oldness of Christ. Amen. It's a new wine skin, not an old wine skin. It's a new anointing, not an old anointing. Amen. It's who you are and who I am. We don't have to be duplicates. Amen. We don't have to be um, carbon copies. God has us uniquely placed in, on this planet for a unique situation, a unique position, a unique mission. Amen. That's why he made us all different. We may look similar. We may have all the all the things inside of our body that's very similar or the same. But he has a unique purpose and plan for your life and a unique purpose and plan for my life. And through that plan, he wants us to be whole. Amen. Not broken, not damaged, but made whole and holy, sanctified for his purpose and use. And he's going to do that through our mind, will and emotions. He's going to do that through our spiritual well-being through our spirit through our body amen amazing if you could get this i'm getting it now right apostle paul definitely inspired by holy spirit god to write this down and all these years later the principles of god still stands amen and his promises still stand he wants us to make us whole if we could believe that amen we would change rapidly we wouldn't waste a lot of time thinking about the old things. Yesterday, I was trying to think. And my daughter, my one-year-old, kept on coming into my studio, coming into my studio. And my wife said, I'll keep over here. I said, no, I, I'm okay. I'm done. I can't think. In other words, um, you know, I was trying to think of something um, that I wanted to do in the, on the radio network. But because my daughter kept on coming back and forth, I couldn't think. Sometimes God wants us to be alone and think. And we'll get his thoughts in us, amen, uninterrupted, because he wants us to be undamaged. He wants us to be unbroken. He wants us to think clearly, amen. And it's a blessing that I have a one-year-old. I'm not complaining that she kept on coming in and out of the studio, but I couldn't think, amen. I can't think that way. So that's why, I think that's why Jesus would go, when he was in his earthly ministry, he would go and go to the mountain and go somewhere by himself to speak to the Father, to pray, so he could think, Amen. And there's, there's power in silence. There's power in, um, you know, solitude. Amen. He doesn't want us to be alone all the time. He just wants us sometimes alone with him. So he could continue the process of our thinking pattern and our way of thinking. That's for somebody. I don't know if that was just for me. So um, when you're when you're young, right, you want things. You want everything. I'm looking at my one-year-old reminding myself of when I was a kid. Yeah, I wanted everything. And as soon as I could touch something, it's mine now. And I don't want to share it with nobody, right? Pretty much that's how kids are. But when you get older, right, 
Um, you, you start noticing that you're loved. You have a loving family. Um, I pray that you do have a loving family. I hope that you are a family that embraces the gospel, that you're in a family that loves one another. You're in a family that forgives one another. You're, you're in a family that asks for forgiveness of one another. Not a perfect family, but a perfected family. I pray that over your life. So when you're young, you learn things. And when you're a teenager, you think you know everything. And then when you get older, you try to figure out what you thought you knew, right? When you're an adult. But God doesn't want us to live that way. He doesn't want us to always try to figure things out. He has already figured out everything. The rest is just about faith and putting our trust and hope in Him. It will take us the rest of the way. Whatever I don't know, whatever you don't know, He knows it all. So we need not worry about anything. The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petition, make your requests known to Him. And He will give us the answers. I'm paraphrasing. So sometimes you just have to just... Really ask yourself. <clears throat> really make a decision. What are you going to do? You're going to finally decide. You have to make a final decision. To ask Jesus to come into your life for real, for real. Not uh, a halfway in God. We don't serve a, a God that comes to save us halfway. We serve a God that comes to save us whole. Whole. And not only for, to save me, to save me and my whole household. That's the power of God's promises. So when you got that, when you had the Lord, when you made whole by him, you're going to experience a tremendous sense of being forgiven, number one, being valued, number two, amen, and you're going to be made new from the inside out, um, and you're going to be filled with God's presence. So therefore, wherever you go, you're taking God with you, or I, sh- I should say God is taking us with him, wherever we go. It doesn't, our wholeness doesn't um, just stay in a building that we worship in. Our wholeness stays with us everywhere we go. Our holiness is with me even when I'm alone, when nobody's around. When you're alone, when nobody's around, when nobody can see, we're still holy. We're made, we're being made perfect. And God has a plan for your life and for mine. So it might be for the first time in your whole life that you would deeply understand that you could be made whole today, right now. Aren't you tired of walking around broken, busted, disgusted about life, about issues that you can't figure out and you don't have the answers for everything? You can't fix everything that's broken, but God can. He could fix everything that's broken. He could fix everything that's damaged. Amen. He knows how to deal with our soul, our will, our emotions, our decisions. He knows how to deal with our spirit and he knows how to deal with our body physically. There's nothing that God does not know how to do. We're the ones that are going around saying we know what to do. And in the back of our mind says, I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I wake up in the morning to do these morning devos. Say, God, you're going to have to take care of this whole morning devo because I don't know what I'm about to say. I don't know what I'm about to do. Only people know what I'm talking about. So this thing is beautiful. This relationship with God is beautiful because I know that every step I make, I don't have to know what's the next step. I don't have to figure out everything all the time. I don't have to put the pressures of the world on my shoulders. Amen. I go to my father. Amen. Who knows how to navigate this thing that we call life. I go to the father who knows the answers to every single question that I've ever had in life. I go to the father who is the one, the true and the only way, truth in life. I go to the father because he is my heavenly father. And he knows everything and he sees everything from his vantage point of his view. So the promise of the Bible is that all who believe in and receive Jesus will be born again. That's what me being made whole is. When you're born again, you're a new person. When you have, when a woman is pregnant, right? And I know there's a whole debate going on about, oh, women are saying they, they own their body. But guess what? When a woman is pregnant, uh, there's another person In their body. It's not their body anymore. They're sharing. They're housing another body that's coming out. I believe when we're born again, we're not, we don't own ourselves. We're bought by price. We're bought by blood, the blood of Christ. And now there's a new creation living inside of us. There is the Holy Spirit God living inside of us. So therefore, I don't have no ownership to this body anymore. It's just a vessel that's being used by a holy, loving, creative God. Amen. 
So we move forward because God moves us forward. Amen. We're made alive because God's the resurrected Jesus who fills us with the love and the presence of God himself. So then and only then that our spiritual thirst begins to be satisfied, that our hunger begins to be satisfied as well as a spring of water welling up to eternal life. John 4, 14. Amen. So if you're not born again, that means you're not made whole. If you're going around thinking that you're whole and you're not born again, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, that's not that's not it. That's not it at all. So I hope and pray that you get an understanding. Read Philippians. Well, Thessalonians. I keep on saying Philippians. I guess that's where I'm going to go next. Thessalonians chapter 5. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. To find out what Apostle Paul was getting at. Amen. Because we just camped out on that one verse. Because usually on morning devotionals. You just can't bother on um, one or two verses um, because that's where God wants you to be focused on. Amen. And then he'll give you so much more when you continue to expand what God is trying to say in your life and in my life. So I bless you all in the name of Jesus. I thank you for hanging out with me for this week. Uh, I celebrate Monday through Friday um, that I finally did a whole week again. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that opportunity. Amen. Until the next time I see you again, hopefully uh, I love you and I bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you and remember always that God is good. Peace.